Hey guys, what is going on today? I hope everyone's having an awesome day so far. Make sure you check out the very end of the video. I wanna unveil some stuff that I've been working on. So I'm here to finish up that comic that I promised you I would finish. The one that I covered only half of the other day. You know, this one about Obi-Wan and Vader on Mustafar. While the rest of the comic is mostly politics, it's still very interesting and important. And also to help you not be confused for the next comic coming after this one. Now I'm gonna add the part of the last comic in here to make it full for you, for anyone who's here for the first time or if you just want the full story again. So if you've seen the first bit, just skip a couple minutes after right here. So let's begin. Fire and lava ablaze, Vader is right back on Mustafar before he was beaten and burned by his former master. As Obi-Wan jumps to the high ground, he looks to Anakin and tells him, it's over, and you guys know the rest. When we see Vader say the exact same line Anakin did in Revenge of the Sith, standing in the exact same spot. However, this time, his powers fully unlocked in the dark side, his rage burning hotter than the lava that sparked his inevitable doom. As he says, You underestimate my power. As Obi-Wan tells him not to try it, we all know what happened in the original timeline, where Anakin jumped and got sliced into pieces. Vader now harnessing the dark side of the Force, lifts the lava onto Obi-Wan and then throws him into the air slamming him to the ground. As Vader watches his old master recite the same lines, only now having switched places, the comic actually gets really dark, which surprised me to say the least, but in a good way. As lava comes crashing down onto Obi-Wan's body and face, melting and burning him alive as it devours him whole, Vader just callously stands there, watching in amusement, remembering where he lay at the hands of Kenobi. As his mask lowers onto his scarred head, Lord Sidious' voice speaks to him. Lord Vader, come to me. I have a task for you. Yes, my master. The time has come for this empire to evolve. It must become more than a political abstraction. In the three years since my ascension, I have allowed a convenient fiction to persist that the Empire is merely an extension of the Republic. The Imperial Senate remains an illusion of many voices coming together to govern. In truth, there is only one voice. Mine. As Palpatine continues to talk, he basically tells Vader that the Moncala are very defiant to the Empire. As Sidious tells Vader that it is time the Empire show its true strength to the galaxy, Vader asks him if the weapon is ready, where Sidious tells his apprentice, No, Krennic and his scientists inform me its primary weapon is not yet operational, but we have many weapons. Star Destroyers, the new fighters, they will suffice. My master, I will lead a military maneuver against Moncala if you wish, but I am no longer a general. As Palpatine tells him that he is still demoted, he informs him that there is something fishy going on with the planet of Moncala, that he thinks they are cooperating with a Master Jedi. Vader jumps at the word, bowing to his master as he is instructed to find out who the Jedi is, if there is one, and to put a stop to it and any more that survived Order 66. As the scene shifts pace to Tarkin aboard the Imperial Star Destroyer, we see his subordinates suggest to use firepower on the planet, where Tarkin tells him that the negotiations must resume diplomatically, as Mon Cala is a valuable planet to the Empire with many advantages. To blow it up would be poor judgment so soon. Besides, he says how Palpatine really enjoys the Mon Cala aquatic ballet, telling them he will not destroy it, not without cause, we are taken down to the planet itself, in the city of Dak, where we see one of the Empire's negotiators speaking to King Lee Char. He speaks to him about giving the Empire their Kelpite strand beams for practically pennies, all in favor of being protected by the Empire itself. When the King says protection from what, the galaxy is at peace. As Vader's ship flies by Tarkin in space, he grants it permission to proceed to the planet, telling his troops that this ship offers a different type of negotiation. As Radis and the King speak about the mysterious Jedi friend who is so focused on saving the galaxy, Vader and the Inquisitors finally land. Opening the door to see Commander Akbar, the infamous man tells the Inquisitors to halt as he is handed an official order with the Emperor's seal himself, instructing them that any interference with the Inquisitorius will be an act of war against the Empire. 
Clearly having an issue with the memo from the Emperor, Akbar looks in disgust as the Ninth Sister tells him to take it up with the boss. As he looks to the ship and from the red smoke emerges the black figure of death, Lord Vader has arrived. Now this part of the comic is pretty cool in my opinion on Akbar's part. He full on tells Vader to reveal his intentions before he lets him continue pretty much denying him and not bowing before him like everyone else. As Vader yields and tells the commander that they are on the hunt for an enemy of the Empire, Akbar stands back in confusion, telling Lord Vader that no one here is an enemy of the Empire. When all of a sudden the Imperial shuttle bursts into flames as Vader and his crew continue to walk past Akbar and his awestruck men, saying, Commander, you are mistaken. As notice of things is brought to Tarkin's attention up above, he sternly looks to the planet and orders for military craft to land on the planet immediately at his orders. As we go to the final but most captivating part of the comic, a voice most likely that of the king is heard echoing to a mysterious Jedi Master in brown robes, telling him or her that the Empire has waged war on the planet and will be landing soon, and that Inquisitors along with another man is joining them. This one is tall, armored, masked, and dressed all in black. As he says, Akbar didn't get his name when the Jedi Master tells him, I know his name. Skywalker. And that wraps up this comic issue, guys. We won't get the continuation until the second week of April, so that's almost another month away in which I hope you will all join me again to embark on the next piece of Vader's mission in crushing this Jedi that has obviously survived Order 66, and what's even more alarming is that he knows exactly who Skywalker has turned into, and who Vader is vice versa. Personally, I hope that it's Master Windu, and while that's a very far reach and hopeful thinking, I know, my reasoning behind this is that who else would know that Skywalker turned into Vader? Who else would know that Skywalker survived Order 66? Who knows if it'll happen or not? My other theory is that it could be Luminara Unduli, but I guess time will tell. Maybe this is the same Jedi Master who Vader was searching for a few issues earlier, if you guys remember. I really am curious to know who it is, so let me know who you think it could be. And also, for those of you who have made it this far in the video, I want to get your opinion on a series of new t-shirts that I've been having made behind the scenes, of course. The line is called Fists of Power, and well, as you can see for yourself, it's something that I've been working on a lot and really hard, and it's been quite costly, but I think it's turning out really well. So. I hope you guys will enjoy it, and if you're ever planning on getting a shirt and you want to support the channel and rep the channel, well, hopefully these will be out soon for you. Thanks again for watching, guys. Your input is always valuable, and I will see you all in the next episode of Star Wars Theory. Until then, my fellow Jedi and Sith friends, remember... The Force will be with you. Always.